Hello everyone, my name is Yogesh. In today's lecture, we'll learn about Apache Druid. And today's lecture I have divided into two parts. So today I will be completing basic of, you can say theory and more of a practical and with the, how the UI works and how the services work. And tomorrow we'll cover more on architecture part and also on how you can integrate with Apache Superset to create dashboards. So let's start. And you don't have to worry. It will be more of a practical than the theory. So I have kept the theory to the minimal. So Apache Druid is a tool which provides you and facility you, where you can transform the data while ingestion. So you don't have to run a bad job later on to transform the data. Also, it provides you facility to run concurrent queries to get the data. And also it makes your data ready for analytics. It can do, you can say rollups and other operations, which can later be used for analysis purposes. And then we have Apache Druid is designed for scalable. So it's, uh, you can say cluster, it supports the cluster system. You, you can have a big cluster supporting Druid. So, and also it's a fault tolerant. So multiple nodes and the data can be spread across the multiple nodes. Coming toward the key feature, one is it's fast, uh, fault tolerant. Data is all by default encrypted. It's scalable to multiple uh, cluster setup. Now the parallel data processing, as you can trigger multiple jobs to transform the data. The most important feature is like it's access, means you can access through SQL, you can access through API, you can access through JDBC driver. So the accessibility part is very good, which generally comes uh, becomes a problem with a lot of big data tools where they don't have, uh, you can say connectivity with, or you can say it doesn't have an interface to connect. So API kind of make it open for every other thing. Uh, if uh, if nothing works for your programming language, but with the API, you can anyhow trigger the job, get the data and do X, Y, Z operation. So I will demonstrate that as well. Now coming to it, like where the Druid should be used. Now, as I told you, it's meant for transforming the data while ingestion and keeping it ready for analytic purposes. So it is uh, used for that particular part and especially based uh, on the time series data. So your data need to have a timestamp. That's why you analyze it. So uh, it's good to uh, create a dimension and then it can transform into a fact table. Like it's, it creates the fact table and it later can be used for generating dimensions. It, it is for analytical processing. It's not for OLTP. Now coming to where you should not use one, you should not use it for OLTP. It's not uh, meant for OLTP purposes. Secondly, as we are talking about ingestion while like uh, transformation while ingestion, we are talking about the incremental data. It is not good with, uh, you can say large update and delete. So it's always good. You you can just send uh, incremental data. It's more for the logs. So give you an, uh, giving you a scenario, let's say Uber uses it, uh, Druid for analyzing their data and then making a decision whether they should increase the price on your screen or not for the cap, like you can say booking for the cap when you're booking for the cap. So that kind of analysis is always incremental. They don't have to update your records. It's more of like collecting the data, what is happening in the area, whether it's a rain and whether it's a more in demand and then accordingly make an algorithm to give you a price. So in that case, the data is always incremental. So it's good with that. It's not meant for big joins and neither for the full text search. Specifically on Druid website, they have specifically mentioned it's not good for full text search. For that, you should always go for elastic search or solar. Not for that. Now let's start with the, uh, you can say practical first and we'll look into the architecture later on in the second session. So let's come. So now to run Druid, it's very simple. Uh, one, it works only on Mac or Linux. It doesn't work on Windows. I know I'm demonstrating on Windows. So what I have done is I have a running Druid on background in the Mac system. Uh, so this is my Mac system interface. So what you have to do is you just download it. I have Java 8, uh, you can see JDK 8 and run this start micro quick start. Now uh, it will run, a, you can say, uh, you can say microservice uh, on your computer. Why this one? Because in the documentation, you can easily figure it out, like what are the different architecture and what are the server deployments uh, types. They have like, you can say mini micro, depending on the system. So I am using micro, which is four CPU and 16 GB of RAM, which is enough for me for doing this demo. But you need to scale it up accordingly when it comes to the production. So it's more of a learning site. So you just start this micro, uh, you can say shell command and automatically it will start the, your Druid. Druid will be hosted on your port double eight, double eight. Now coming toward the practical example, let's directly start with the practical. So what we'll do is we'll load the data. So I will go in a start specification. So for loading the data, you have to click on the start specification and we go, we will go for this pass data. Now, why this pass data? Because I just want to copy paste the data, but else if you want to do with different things, there are multiple 
uh, you can say drivers for that. You can connect to Kafka, Amazon Kafka, Kinesis, uh, Hadoop, and reindex for like this is more of a job. And S3 you can directly do. You can use Google Cloud Storage for which is Firebase and all. You can load it from file and other is also there. And also API is also there like to load the data. So it's more like you can have n number of you can say data source input and you can use let's start with the past data else everything remains same just the data source changes and what i will do is i will take the csv file copy some data which is just till 23 records and i will copy it here now if i go next past data it will automatically show me different data and also you see this date time uh you can say date of birth uh it has already converted that into a date time let's go to the next so it has taken date of birth as a you can say slicing as I told you it's more of a time series data so it's always uh, be you should have at least one time series uh, you can say time series column with no label data. Now coming to the transformation in transformation you can add basic formulas let's say you can say upper upper case data I'm just giving let's say upper and I will use user underscore uh, user underscore uh, this username column. So if I apply automatically, it will add a column. Now, what kind of transformation you require? There are like full set of expressions which are available, like which is general expression, then string expression, and then time expression. You have mathematical uh, expression to compute. You can say different columns. And then on top of that, uh, the you can say your roll up will happen. So there are so many operators that you can look at. Uh, I'm not going into the details of each and every operator. I'm just making you familiar with the interface. Now coming to the next and I will create go to the configure schema. So go to the partition now partition. Okay. Let's go to transformation again. So let's go to filter and configure. So in configure, you can enable the rollup. Now when you do an, an uh, rollup operation, so here you can see like this date timestamp has year into it, month into it and date into it. So like there is 1992 03, which is March 19. Now, let's say you want to say, I want to only analyze data monthly, not based on the date. So if I just change, so look at this value, which is like third March 19th. If I just change it to month here, and you will see all the dates has converted to zero. And that's how the, you can say the dimensions are made. Like when you are talking about, like you want to make dimension based on the month. So automatically it will uh, make every date to be zero one. It's not for the fact, a uh, real fact of the data. It's more like for analytical, uh, you want to analyze monthly. So it totally depends upon how many dimension you want. You want hourly or daily. So I will just choose a day, which is the minimum dimension. I don't have an R dimension. So that doesn't make any sense to have. Let's go to the partition. Now, what partition is like how the data is stored and why that helps? Because when you're querying, so you are going based on the timestamp, let's say greater than uh, last month, first of last month or something like that. So the date, the query need to come fast. So it totally depends upon the partition. So let's say you are saying day partition means your query will be always querying as per the day. But let's say you are querying as per you can say month, then you should, uh, should choose the month partition. It's about how the data is stored in different, different partitions. I'll just choose a monthly partition. And then going to publish in publish. Now, this is the main thing. Let's change it to, you can say candidate. Sorry, let me say candidate sample data. I have multiple candidate data already ingested just for practicing purposes. So just ignore those. So we are uh, creating a data source for data source. A name is uh, candidate underscore sample underscore data. I go to edit spec. Now I will copy this edit spec. I will tell you the reason for that so that we can show how we can submit the same job using an API. So this, uh, you can say JSON is required when you're submitting data through, through the API. And you can see all the data is here. Uh, like this is the column and these are the data. But also let's say if the input uh, type is not in line, it's from uh, Kafka and also this part will change. And the transformation column, which we have added, you can see it's here. So the thing is, JSON is nothing but a summary of all these steps, what we have gone through. Let's go and submit. So as I have submitted it, uh, so this is the ingestion task. Let it complete. Yep, it's complete now. Now 
I have come to this query window. I can see still my sample data is not in here. So sometimes it takes times to uh, get appear into this, uh, you can say query, uh, query tab. So let's just wait for a couple of minutes. Now you can see our data is there, which is candidate sample data. So sometimes it might take more than you can say a couple of minutes. So you don't have to worry about. So the ingestion time and so showing success in ingestion is more of how like your data has come from the destination. So from source to destination, but to make it available, it has to create schemas and the and table and other things. So for that, it might take some time. So you don't have to worry about it might take a couple of minutes to appear here. So let's say if I query the data, I run. I can see my all the columns and my timestamp and these are my data. Now, what I need to do is I have to append the data into same, you can say, uh, data set. Okay. So I'll go and load the data again. So right now, if I go in here and I just to count, let me say how many records I have. So I have 22 records. Now what I will do is I will go in here. I will copy my first column link. Uh, go in pass data again, connect, paste, enter, and I will take some records from the bottom. I think till here. So if I copy them here, go to next, again apply, pass data. Again, the things are same. I will go in here, uh, time date. Now I won't add any transformation column and we'll see what it changes there. Go to next. Configure. I will add a roll up here. Now I am adding a roll up. I had didn't add it a roll up before, but I am adding it now. Again, I will select the partition to be month. Go to next. Go to publish. But now the name I will keep the same. So what I have kept in the previous one, so which is candidate sample data. Go in, submit the task. Let's wait for a couple of minutes for injection and to complete. I think it should take less than a couple of minutes. Let's wait. Now it's the success is made. Let's go to the query. Even if I query now, I can still see the 22 number of records. As I told you, sometimes after ingestion, it might take a couple of minutes to data to appear. Let's wait. Now you can see the count has changed to 73. And now let's look at the data also. I can see that. And also now you can see the count. Now, even I didn't add it a roll up before, but uh, let me just change the data. So it is showing one, two, seven to three. Let me see if I can modify it. It's only showing 23 records. Okay, next, let's go. So here you see automatically it has added count for all of the records. And if I go in my uppercase, so I can see it has added uppercase to all the columns. So even if the, you can say, uh, we add a new transformation, it will automatically get computed for all the data set. So this is a kind of a good feature. So it works like that only. So, yeah. So now let's, so here you can see, so these are uppercase uh, data and these are username. So for the one which has username, it has added an uppercase for all of them. So it get recomputed. So that's why it takes some time to data to get up here. Now coming to it, how we can do the same operation using an API. So now in Druid, you have already have an API uh, which hosts on the same port, which is double it, double it. And what you can do is you can go and use this expression. I have used this basic authentication, which is admin and I have kept my password. Now, one more thing by default, you doesn't require an authentication. Why I have done is because I, to, for tomorrow or the second video, I will be showing you the superset integration, which requires a password there. So now if I go in here, I can trigger this query candidate data, or you can say candidate, let's just trigger from the candidate data and I can see the data here. So now you can get the result using the query as well. Now coming toward the load part. So as I told you, like we have kept this data so that if I want to create a new data set, so let's look at our data sets. So if I go into the query, I can see these data. So what I will do is I will copy this text, go in here. I have the second API. Now the port is 8081, which is a coordinator host where we submit this task. Uh, so that we will cover our in tomorrow session regarding the architecture and this is the api url this is a post method and i will just copy paste the same load now what i will do is for doing a change 
So I will change. Uh, give me a second. Yep. So. Yep. So here is the schema name. So what I will do is I will just say API. Because sample data. So as this data so didn't exist in here, so we can see there is no data source with the API. So what I will do is I will just submit the query. Now when I submit the query, I can go to the injection and I can see a running injection. So I am able to submit the job from API. And that is the most favorable one where you will submit the jobs using API most of the time. Or you can have a scheduled job uh, to pull the data. Now it has gone success. Now let's wait for a couple of minutes so that our data set get available here. So our name was API. I think API underscore. I think we forgot. Like, okay. I think it should be in here. Yep. It's API underscore sample data. So let's wait for a couple of minutes and it will appear here. Now you can see our API sample data has also appeared into this query window and I can query the same data. Now, this is one way of showing it and let's look into DB viewer. So in DB viewer, we can connect using Apache Calcite driver. And again, the things are very same. You just need to provide username, localhost and 8088, like 8082, which is more of a data. Uh, also, you can use 8888, And now I can see this Druid as a schema. I can go list all the schemas and I can query from here. So I can just write a query. Let me just write a script. So I can just do select star from API underscore sample underscore data. So if I run this query, I can see the data from here. So you can also query the data from different management tools. And apart from that, you have PyDruid for connecting using Python. So there are a couple of, not a couple of, there are many ways to connect to your Apache Druid and which makes it very good tool for your data ingestion and making it data ready for analytics. And you need to be very sure, like why do you need this? Because there is a lot of time sensitive data and you want to analyze on top of it. If your data is not time uh, series or time sensitive data, then you should not be using Druid. So this is the main, uh, you can say crux of it. This is an architecture. Uh, so you can say how the Druid works. You have raw files or you can have Kafka or Hadoop or even if you don't have a raw file, you just want to directly push the data through API, you can push and then you can consume in a dashboard, which we'll cover tomorrow. And this is the basic syntax. So like you know, the architecture, which we'll uh, again discuss tomorrow. Now coming toward the integration, as I told you, Python can be easily queried. Uh, use, uh, data can be easily queried using Python, using PyDruid. And then we have JDBC driver, superset. API is also available and CLI is also available. Now coming toward which company uses it. There are many companies which use it. Wipro, Flipkart, Google, all these companies uses it. Uh, Amazon uses it and Uber uses it. Wherever there is a data which is coming as a time log and then then there's, it has to make ready to make a business decision on top of it. So all those companies use it and it's a great tool. So if you have any question, kindly let me know anyhow and wait for the second uh, part of it. And we'll discuss uh, in that as well. If you have any question, just put in the comments or you can reach me on my email, which is contact at the or yogesh.mail at gmail.com. Stay safe, happy, 